So, um, Senator, glad to have you. Well, it's terrific to be here, and uh, thanks so much for all you do. You know, you, you made sure that uh, Nancy Pelosi got fired, and you made sure that we got six new Republicans in the United States Senate, so I should be thanking you. Well, we did our best, and uh, we're focused on 2012 now, trying to get a couple more, get that majority back. But um, I know that you're specifically focused on health care, um, and what do you see that uh, the future holds for kind of either trying to completely repeal or... Um, piecemeal replace Obamacare. Yeah. We're going after this every way possible. We're going after it in the courts, we're going after it in the Congress, and then we're going after it all across the country. We've had the rulings in Virginia and Florida that are helpful. We need the Supreme Court to just throw this out completely because you and I both know that this law is unconstitutional. We can't rely entirely on the courts to get it right, which is why in Congress we're having bills to, to, to repeal the whole thing. You know, it passed in the House. In the Senate, we've had the fight. Harry Reid has said, well, you're not going to be able to uh, have any votes on this. Well, Mitch McConnell said, yes, you will, and we did. So now everybody's on the record. Uh, Lindsey Graham and I have introduced a bill to give states health care choice. It's called the State Health Care Choice Act, to let states opt out of this health care law. Let the people of a state decide. One size doesn't fit all in our country, and what works in Wyoming and my state isn't necessarily what's going to work in California or New York, and let governors and states decide. Uh, and then we're going to take this all around the country, because people all around the country still know that this law is bad for patients, it's bad for providers, the nurses and the doctors who take care of those patients, and it is bad for the taxpayers who are going to get stuck with the bill. And what do you think of uh, Democrats now trying to kind of reach out across the aisle and claim that they're willing to work with Republicans on a couple different provisions repealed? Do you think that that's disingenuous, or do you think that the Democrats legitimately do see that the law is flawed? Well, I think the Democrats have seen the handwriting on the wall. When Claire McCaskill from Missouri knows that the, that the Missouri voters last, uh, April, last August in their primary, 71 percent of them voted against the individual mandate, and she's running again in 2012. You know, we have a lot of uh, Democrats who are up in 2012, 23 of them. Uh, Ten of them are in states that John McCain carried, and I think they realize that they have voted for something that is not good for this country, and it's going to add to the debt, uh, make it harder for people to get a doctor. Uh, they take $500 billion from Medicare, not to, not to help save Medicare, but to, to, to uh, start a whole new government program, and it's not selling back home. What do you think, I know that you talked about how, um, sponsoring a bill to allow the states to opt out and kind of um, institute their own programs. Do you think that's politically viable? Do you think that uh, the Democrats will go along with that? Or is that something that we're going to have to wait a long time to see? Well, you know, 26 governors have signed on to the lawsuit to say this is unconstitutional. And, and I believe that governors and people at home want this opportunity. So let those governors talk to the senators from their state. And then let, the, let those senators, Democrat senators, if they choose to vote against the people of their own state and to vote against the governor of their own state, then they'll have to explain that to the voters come, uh, come November of 2012. And I don't think the governor, the, 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 uh, the governors want to hear excuses from senators in Washington who think they know better than the people back home. You're speaking here at 1 p.m. Do you want to give us a little preview of your speech? Well, I'm going to say that uh, we need to repeal this broken health care law. That uh, I think President Obama has made a lot of promises to the American people, and now it's been about a year since the law has been passed. And you know what's happened is that uh, those promises that have been made, people realize they're broken. And that's why 59 percent of people on Election Day, the voters in the exit polls, still want this law repealed. And when you talk to people, and poll people that have actually talked to a doctor or a nurse or a physician assistant or somebody about health care, then the number of people that oppose this health care law goes up. So kind of the more you know about it, the more you don't like it. And well, wasn't it Nancy Pelosi that said first you have to pass it before you get to find out what's in it? The more that people are finding out what's in it, the less they like it. Along those lines, um, did you see yesterday that the CBO estimated that Obamacare is going to cost 800,000 jobs? Is that on the, um, do you have to pass it to find out what's going to happen to it? Well, you know, they've been talking about that from the beginning, and so has the, uh, the National Federation of Independent Business, a group that I was a member of when I was still practicing medicine in Wyoming. Uh, we've used to call this a job-killing bill, and now we have to call it a job-crushing bill uh, in law, but it does have an impact. It hurts the economy. The, uh, the, they have the incentives all wrong, and uh, these are, it, it's going to make it harder for small businesses to hire people. It's going to make it easier for small businesses to drop covering 
people with insurance. You know, the Democrat governor of Tennessee, he just went out of office, Governor Bredesen, said that uh, he called this whole Medicaid thing the mother of unfunded mandates. And, and he went on to say that uh, the incentives are that if he were going to start a business, it would be in his best financial interest to never offer health insurance to any of his employees. And I don't think that's what the president wanted to accomplish initially. But I do wonder, though, if, if underlying this, uh, the liberal Democrats really do want this whole Obamacare thing to fail, because what they really want is a British health care system or a Canadian system, a single-payer system, a full government takeover, government-controlled medicine. And we know that's not uh, doesn't work in Canada. 33,000 Canadians came to the United States last year for care uh, because they couldn't get it in Canada, even though they have coverage. You know, the president often talks about coverage. Somebody has, he said, we'll make people get coverage. Coverage doesn't equal care. And if you just to give somebody a Medicaid card, which they've done, cramming 16 million more people onto <laughs> Medicaid, um, half the doctors don't want to see patients on Medicaid because the reimbursement is so low. They can't afford to keep their doors open if all they see are Medicaid patients. And, and the president uses those words, care and coverage, uh, you know, in, in misleading ways. So it's just more of what we see from this administration. Thanks so much for talking with us. Senator Barrasso with townhall.com. Thank Senator, you very much. Appreciate looking it. forward Thanks. to your speech. Thank you.